Okay, this is a Toshiba DVR620. It's just a VCR DVD unit, similar to the Magnavox ones. It looks almost the same. It is built by Funai Symphonic, and it's virtually a carbon copy of the Magnavox ZV427MG9. Forehead Hi-Fi Stereo VCR. Everything moves freely. Let's go ahead and power this thing up and I'll show you what's going on. I'll try to do a little split screen action right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the power button right here. And as you can see, the light does light up. The door does move. Then the door moves again. And then it should power down. Yes, it does power down. We can do the exact same thing again. It retracts the cassette carriage. It tries to load a tape, and then it will shut down in a few seconds. There it goes. Okay, so let me show you what I found thus far, and we'll move on from there. Okay, so I've got my voltmeter set up on the loading motor right now. And it might be hard to see, but I did put a black mark on the actual loading motor pulley so you can see it as it rotates. So I'm going to hit the power button, power on. Let's look at the voltmeter. So I've got, it went negative 10. And then it goes positive 11 and then 9 volts. It's trying to load right now, but it can't load. And then it'll shut the power off. Let's just do min-max here. We'll do one more try. So that unloaded at negative voltage. And then it reloads at positive voltage. So I've got a positive 11.13 volts going to the loading motor and a negative 11.13 volts, exactly the same. So what it's doing, it's trying to unload and it thinks there's a tape still inserted. So it tries to reload after that. And that's when it shuts down because it can't successfully complete the loading process. The next thing I want to do is turn off all the lights and get my cell phone out and look down in this prism right here and see if I see light coming out of it because the cell phone camera will actually pick up the light of the infrared emitter. So there, the prism has been removed. You can actually see the infrared emitter right there, that LED down there. Although it's not really a light emitting diode, it is a infrared emitting diode. So I'm gonna get my cell phone out and I'm gonna to try to position it so it'll look down inside there. Let me go ahead and do a couple things first, then we'll take a look at this and see if I can see it lighting. Okay, this is the infrared emitter LED and you can see it is lighting. I'm not sure if I can zoom in on it. Let me go ahead and kill the power to the unit And you can see it does extinguish power back on And the LED is lighting and it's going to try to load and reload go through the same process So I need to find out why is it trying to load? So I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the prism and we'll take a look at this infrared receiver right here and see if it's picking up the signal that the infrared emitter is putting out. Okay, Prism is reinstalled. Let me get a couple jumper leads and we'll connect it to that individual infrared receiver LED right there and see what it has to say. Okay, so I do have a couple probes connected to the infrared receiver LED. Let's power this thing on, look at the voltage, and I'm gonna make and break this. And look at that, I do see a difference as I make and break it. So 4.7 volts and down to 3.1. So that seems to be making a difference. Maybe it's not that much of a difference. Let me turn out the lights. So still 3.3 volts when I block it, 4.9. Maybe it's not going quite low enough. Let's go ahead and check the one on this side as well and see what the voltages out of that are. Okay, probes have been moved to the other side, so now I see 0.155 volts. That's a big difference. Now let me go ahead and block this, and it goes up to 5 volts. What a big difference. So do we have a prism issue, or do we just have a failed infrared receiver right here? Or is it just freaking out of alignment? Maybe if I just move it, it'll see more light. But you can definitely see the difference. 5 volts. 
down to basically zero volts. Okay, meter reattached on this side. Remember, we went from basically 0.1 volts to 5 volts. Well, it does go to 5 when I block this side, but it only goes down to 3.3. .3. So I'm just going to reach in here with some needle nose pliers and try to bend it while I'm watching it here. I'm moving it up and down and around, and the best I got was 2.5 volts as I lift it up. So yeah, I'm thinking we just have a failed infrared receiver right here. Because it should be seeing that light. So just for the heck of it, I'm going to go ahead and clean that prism and see if it makes any kind of a difference whatsoever. So I just have a cotton swab with some household glass cleaner. I'm just going to clean the outside of the prism. Anywhere that can detract from the light. Dry it off with the dry side. And we're still sitting at 3.1 volts. Well, I think the next step is going to be just simply replacing that infrared receiver and seeing if that makes a difference. Okay, well, the next thing I'm going to do is pull the front off this unit, take the DVD drive out of it completely. That way I can get in here with the solder sucker and unsolder those leads to that infrared receiver. And to remove the front panel, one screw right there. These don't really have to be removed, but it does make removal of the DVD mechanism a little bit better. Actually, I think if I just remove this cross brace right here, probably do it without taking the front panel off of the unit if it'll give it up it's there we go it was not being amicable in its divorce Okay, now we can actually get to the LED receiver. So hopefully this will focus, but it has one longer lead and one shorter lead. That's just how they cut it off. But see that flat spot right there? That goes down. So the way it was mounted was this way with the longer lead on top, the shorter lead on the bottom, and the flat spot right there on the bottom as well. Okay, so there is the replacement one that I have to go in it. There's the flat spot, which is going to go down just like this. So let's go ahead and see if it'll cooperate and install this thing. So kind of installed off at a bit of an angle. I'm going to go ahead and try to prop it up while I heat one lead up with soldering iron. Okay, so voltmeter is connected to the replacement infrared receiver and I do not have the DVD player installed right now. This unit will not work without the DVD player, but it will produce the voltage that I need to see if the infrared receiver is actually functioning or not. So here we go, power on. And look at that, I get 0 0.140 volts. And so if I block it now, it should try to take a tape. I'm not sure if it will without the DVD being present. And it goes up to 4.8 down to 0.14 volts. That's perfect. That's what I want to see right there. Well, let's go ahead and put the DVD back in it because obviously it's not trying to accept a tape as I make or break the infrared beam. But I think since I'm in it right here and we had so many problems with these, just as a courtesy to the customer, 
I'm going to go ahead and pop this power supply board out of the unit and replace that problematic 4700 microfarad cap just because we're here and it's so freaking close. It's only like a minute of extra work to do this. I would not want this to fail six months or a year or two years down the road. So the capacitor I'm going to be replacing it with is a 4700 6.3 volt cap, 105 degrees Celsius, and I believe this is a Panasonic Good high quality cap. I've tested these. They are 0.02 ohms ESR as good or better than I bet that thing is a Suscon cap. That is always suspect when it's a Suscon. So let's go ahead and pop the power supply board out of this and replace that capacitor just as a courtesy to the customer because I'm here. It's not really going to cost any labor for the customer, just the part cost only. All right, power supply is unplugged. Just give it a little pull up just like that out of this connector right there, and it will amicably separate from the main board. No divorce proceedings in this one. Okay, new capacitor is reinstalled back on the board, so let's go ahead and put this thing back together now. Okay, unit reassembled. Power this thing on. It should eject at this point, and then it should not try to reload after this. And I'm happy with that. Power this thing on. Not trying to load. That is excellent. DVD is, but that's okay. So let's try to pop a tape into this and see if we need to tear this thing completely down to bits to clean the mode select switch. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, working perfectly. Let's go ahead and let it play for a few seconds and see if it's going to go into shutdown because of a real rotation issue. It takes about 10 seconds of playing before it decides if it does not see the real rotation pulse, it's going to go ahead and shut down. Okay, so that's been about 20 seconds so far and it's working absolutely perfectly. I know you hate me saying that, but it is working absolutely perfectly. Sorry. So next thing, I'm gonna go ahead and get a video capture device set up. I'll get a VHS tape in this unit and a blank DVD R in the DVD drive and we'll try to make a copy and see what happens. So I've got a tape in this unit and I'm trying to determine the total length of the tape. So I'm fast forwarding it to the end with the counter displayed on the screen and I'm at exactly six hours right now. And it says six hours and eight minutes. Well, that's too much to put on a DVD, so I think I'm just going to rewind it one hour. We'll put in a DVD copy, and we'll copy one hour of video over to the, to the DVD and see what happens. Okay, so let's go ahead and set this thing up. And we'll make sure, let's go ahead and pop a disc into it first. See if it reads the disc and if it can record to the disc. Now I'm not planning on cleaning this unit because it is immaculate inside. I don't see that it's been used more, more than a few minutes over its entire lifetime. So it's going to read the disc and hopefully it'll tell me it's a DVD minus R. We'll select one hour and we'll do the DVD dubbing from VHS. Okay, it does know that it is a minus R, so let's go ahead and change it down to one hour. So XP, one hour and one minute. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit the dubbing button. And it should start dubbing. And there it is, making a copy. So we'll check back in an hour and see if it can play this thing back. Christopher Lloyd. Steven Spielberg presents Back to the Future, a Robert Zemeckis film. Rated PG. Now at select theaters. Check newspapers. Okay, well, we're at the end of the DVD recording. We have zero minutes left. Let's see what's going to happen. Okay, it has finished 
writing to the disk. Well, it's finished recording. It's going to write some info to the disk right now. And we'll see what's going to happen when we finish up. And now it's going to finalize the disk. This will take a moment. Stand by. I'll speed this up. Okay, well the disc has finished recording. Let's go ahead and stop it and we'll give it a playback test. Okay, well the disc is finished. Let's go ahead and open the drawer, take the disc out. And we'll close the drawer. And make sure it reads the table of contents and can play the disc back successfully. And it did read the table of contents. Let's go ahead and hit play and see if it actually plays this back. So far, so good. Well, that's exactly what we recorded, the Back to the Future commercial from 1985. There it is, recorded live in 85. So anyhow, I think that's gonna be it. The repair on the Toshiba DVR620 had a bad infrared receiver LED. Well, not really an LED, just a bad infrared receiver. I certainly hope you enjoyed this repair video. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're done, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me norcal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. Please be patient. I have a full-time job and I do these repairs in my spare time. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everyone, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone, have a great day. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. Stand by for bloopers. loading motor pulley right there and I did put a black mark on the so I've got negative 11.13 volts and positive take that again but yes I can and you can certainly see if I don't drop my camera So I need to go ahead and check the voltage on this little infrared receiver. It might be kind of hard to see because of the low light conditions right there. Let's turn some lights back on. Okay, do... Okay, new receiver is installed. I got the voltmeter set up on it. I do not have the DVD drive in the unit. It will not function without the DVD drive, but it will give me the voltages that I need without the DVD drive. Yep, let's get that straightened up. Hang on. Move that over here so you can see what's going on in the middle. And let's get a little block of wood out here. Try to tip that up. Yeah, no, I don't like that at all. How about down here? Oh, that looks better. Okay, let's take that again. Anyhow, working great right now. Just gotta pop the top back on it and get it ready to ship back to my customer, who I think moved from Arizona. Remember, from executive producer Steven Spielberg, Amazing Stories premieres Sunday night on NBC. Let's all be there.